Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca from DevourDinner.com. Welcome to my kitchen and happy Sunday everybody. I'm excited to be here, are you? We're gonna have some fun today. I've got a couple of good recipes that I want to show you how to make. Um, but before we get going, let's make sure our technology is working. We are live on Facebook and on YouTube. So let me just make sure that we are live in both places. And when you hop on, will you say hello? Will you let me know if you can hear me? Let's make sure we're all plugged in because nobody wants to have problems, right? Let's see if we're live on YouTube. I'm just checking. Yes, we are. Okay. We are live on YouTube. Hello, Michelle, loud and clear. Perfect. Trava, wonderful. Hello. Hello, Chris. Hello, Lisa. Hi, Amy. Hi, Jen. <laughs> Love it. Oh my gosh, Jen, this hair's a little crazy. It's a little crazy. I'm trying to embrace the curl, you guys. This is all natural. Um, and I'm trying to learn how to style natural hair. But we'll talk about that as we get into things. Let's get into these recipes today. It's hot out there. It's hot for Eastern Idaho. We're getting close to triple digits, which is crazy for us, um, especially since we've had such a cool summer in the 70s mostly. Um, and so it's hot. And I know around the country it is hot as well. And I wanted to make some recipes where I could use the air fryer and the Instant Pot and help you at home make some meals without heating up your oven and all of those things. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make Instant Pot Goulash. Now, I know those of you who are watching, you call it so many different things, and I love all the fun names. So put in the comments, what do you call goulash? Do you call it hamburger mac? Do you call it slumgullion? What do you call it? Because growing up, our parents all had different names for it for essentially the same dish. It's a hamburger and pasta dish um, cooked with beef broth, and diced tomatoes and a little bit of Worcestershire and a little bit of soy. So let's get that going. We're gonna heat up our pressure cooker um, using the saute feature. We're gonna wait till this front panel does read hot and we're gonna throw in some diced yellow onions and it is already hot because I heated it up beforehand. So we have got some diced yellow onion we're gonna throw in there. You guys wanna to see top down? I know you do. There we go. Now I like to saute up my onions a little bit. We're gonna add the hamburger. I like to get them so they'll sweat a little bit. Um, it just releases some of those flavors which I find are so important to adding flavor to the dish. And then we're just gonna chop up this hamburger. Now this is a pound of hamburger. Um, I am using a lean ground beef, so it is a 97, uh, 97, 93, seven. My brain today, you guys, it's a little crazy. All right, Kathy, I gotta like look close. What do you call it? <laughs> Courtesy of my sweet grandmother, oh my gosh. You guys are hilarious. Amy says we call it goulash growing up, but, but my husband calls it hamburger glop. Deborah says, hi, I have curls like that. Deborah, welcome, you're watching over on YouTube. Okay, Deborah, I'm gonna ask you, how do you how do you control the curl? So those of you who followed me forever, Deborah, if you've been around, you know I my hair's typically straight. I do spend hours flat ironing it. Um, and I recently got back from a trip from Florida and once again, the humidity just gets out of control. So I'm trying to learn how to style curly hair, essentially. I don't think I'm that good at it. People are very polite and tell me it's cute, which I do appreciate, but I would love to know what products 
people with curly hair are using, how you're, how you're maintaining your curls without the frizz in humid climates, all those kind of things. So if you want to be so kind, send me some DMs. I would be so grateful. We won't talk about it here while we're cooking, but I would love it. Okay, so you notice I am just kind of breaking up the hamburger um, and we're getting those onions cooked. We're just gonna let it do its thing. Now, obviously when we press the saute button and the front panel reads hot, it gets it really hot. But as soon as we put the onions in and the hamburger in, it cools off really fast. It's not like our stove that keeps a more even temperature. And so the pressure cooker has to kind of heat back up. And so sometimes it takes a little bit. The good news is we don't have to cook the meat in its entirety right now, okay? Because under pressure, the rest of it will cook. The goal that we need to accomplish is breaking it up. And it's a little hard to see down in the Instant Pot, but if I lift this up so that you can see, see how it's already all chopped up? See that? I've just gone through and broken it up. And that's what's important. We want all the, the big meat broken down into small. We want the onions to start turning a little translucent. They start to sweat. They let off a little bit. Now, if you're using a hamburger like an 80-20, you might want to cook it a little bit more and drain off some of that fat. Um, like I said, I'm using a 93% lean, 7% fat. And so in the end, there really isn't a whole bunch. But I think that looks pretty good. Oh, did I drop the comment? Ooh, I didn't drop that recipe, did I? Let me drop it for you. There we go. Um, if you're following along on your desktop, open up a different tab so you can follow along with this recipe. It is so easy to make. There's always a lot. And you can cut this recipe in half. So this is a lot. Um, I think my cute neighbors are gonna get a surprise drop off later. They're so kind and gracious and they just love living next door to me because I bring them fun treats and fun stuff like that. All right. Now that this is mostly, it's mostly cooked. See that? There's not a lot of pink left in this. I'm gonna start layering up the other ingredients so that this can get cooking. So to do that, oh, you know what? Let's add in our garlic, because I do want the garlic mixed in with the hamburger. I do like both garlic and onions. I know that's a taboo for a lot of people. I like it. You can choose one or the other, it's okay. And we're not gonna worry so much about the bottom of the pot, although if you feel like you've got your onion sticking or your hamburger sticking, make sure to deglaze the bottom of the pot. We've got all this liquid, I don't know if you can see it, that there is nothing stuck to the bottom. So I am just not worried about it at all. But we are gonna start layering things up. So at this point, we're not gonna stir anymore. We're gonna use eight ounces of elbow macaroni pasta, but you could use a penne, you could use a spiral. And notice I'm just evening it out on the bottom. We're then gonna add two cups of beef broth. Now I added a little bit of water to the bottom of this because one can does not equal two cups. Then we're gonna add in some Worcestershire sauce. We're gonna add in some soy sauce. We're gonna add in some Italian seasonings. This is not coming out very fast. There we go. Um, some paprika as well. You can add some pepper. 
And then we're going to add in one can of diced tomatoes with the juice. Now, some people like to add like the Rotel tomatoes that have the tomatoes with the chilies, and that's fine too. But we're going to add I'm just going to spread that out. And then on top of that, we're going to add um, tomato sauce. And I'm going to add it right in the middle. So I'm adding about 15 ounces of tomato sauce. And we are golden. Now, the last thing, a bay leaf. You can add a bay leaf as well. I like to add it on the top so that you don't forget and you remember to pull it out. I'm not adding bay leaf today because I ran out. But it's really good to add in there. So add your bay leaf. Close your top. Make sure your pressure valve is sealed and we're gonna set this for four minutes. So use your plus and minus keys. Adjust up to the four minute mark. And we're gonna wait. Uh oh, there it goes. Um, we're going to wait and it's going to beep at us. There it goes. And when it beeps at us, all it's telling us is it's accepted those readings. So it's now going to start heating that bottom element and it's going to bring that thin liquid, the beef broth, to a boil. As that comes to a boil, it'll create steam and steam creates pressure and the pressure will seal off the Instant Pot. That little pin will raise up and then it'll be sealed off. Now that's going to take some time because we have a pound of hamburger in there. We have eight ounces of pasta in there, plus beef broth, plus tomatoes, plus tomato sauce. So it's going to take upwards of 10 minutes to get all of that going and everything that happens in there. That's normal, okay? So set this off to the side. As I like to remind you, this is the time that I take to kind of clean up the kitchen. Um, set the table, um, load the dishwasher, straighten up the living room, set the kitchen table, whatever it is, because you're now hands-free. This will cook all on its own, and when it's done, we will stir it up and it will be ready to eat. It's going to cook for four minutes. That's pretty quick, once it comes to pressure. Then, after it's cooked for four minutes, it's going to beep at us. When it beeps, we're going to allow a four-minute natural pressure release. That's when we just let the pressure release nice and slow, all on its own. And then we're going to open up the pressure valve and let the rest of that steam shoot out so that we can open up the lid and we can eat. Pretty simple, right? So if you haven't ever pulled out your Instant Pot, it is so easy and I hope you'll do it. Do we have any new people watching? I wanna hear, if you're new, please say hello. Now let me clean up some of this, get it out of the way. We'll pull this over here. And I'm gonna come back and say hello. I know we have Amy on from the Instant Pot 101 for Beginner Group. Amy is the admin over there, and she helps me a ton. Um, it is so great to have the Instant Pot 101 for Beginner Group. We also have a number of the moderators from that group who join in each and every week, and I'm so grateful to these ladies. So if you're hopping over from the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners, welcome. I'm Rebecca from Devour Dinner, and I like to focus on easy to make recipes for busy families using common ingredients. This whole website started out teaching my own boys how to cook their family favorite recipes so that when they left and grew up and went to college or got married or moved out or all the things that kids do, that they would be able to cook at home. And it has since grown from there to so much more. And now I do these Sunday live presentations and hang out with each of you and I adore it. So much fun. Juanita says, I love making goulash in my um, pressure cooker. So easy and delicious. Yum. Your hair looks cute today. Thank you, Juanita. Oh my, Lavina, welcome. I don't know I've seen you before. It's good to meet you from South Wales in the UK. Welcome. All right. So the recipe we just did, I'm going to drop the link again because I know it gets buried, was a goulash recipe. Now it goes by so many names and I've missed everybody on what you guys have said. I know there's so many different names that it goes by. Hamburger Mac, um, Hamburger Slop, Slumgolian, Goulash, 
Um, there's one that starts, that they call Johnny something, but I can't remember. And I don't know why. Crazy. Okay. The next recipe is for the air fryer. These are Cheddar Bay biscuits or Red Lobster biscuits or biscuits with cheese, whatever you want to call it. Now, I don't have this exact recipe on my website. So just kind of follow along with me. Okay, in this bowl, I've got two cups of flour. I've got a teaspoon of, of sugar. I'm gonna add to it some baking powder, baking soda, and some garlic powder, um, as well as some baking soda. So the measurements on those, because I know you guys are at home yelling to me, what are the measurements? Two cups of flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, baking powder, one tablespoon baking powder, uh, a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda, about a half of a teaspoon of garlic powder, and about one teaspoon of sugar. And I'm just gonna mix all of that kind of together. Now, we're gonna add to it about a third of a cup of butter. Here's my tips, okay? This butter is fresh from the fridge. I like using cold butter. We're gonna rip that paper off and I'm going to use a cheese grater. And I just grate it. Makes nice little butter cheese. And I'm gonna do a top down so you can see what I've got going on here. Let's get it. Okay, you see that? And then I just like to kind of take my spoon and kind of get some flour on that butter so it doesn't clump together. Because I don't want it clumped together. I want it to stay individual, which is why I kind of work around. And we're just doing about a third of a cup, which is about five, little over five tablespoons of butter. Because they're biscuits, I don't get all worked up when it comes to my measurements. Now at this point, it becomes really easy to just take a fork to this, to kind of mash it up, right? To break it up. If you have a pastry cutter, you can use your pastry cutter to blend that butter in just a little bit more. The cool thing is, because you have grated the butter when it's cold, it stays in little pieces. So really, all the pastry cutter is doing right now is just breaking them up even finer, which is exactly what you want for biscuits. Right? Because this won't form into dough until we add liquid, which we haven't done yet. Now, you could add, if you want, into these biscuits, you could add some Italian seasonings. There's so much more you can add to these. But I wanna show you, I know it's kinda hard, but look. See that? It's because all that butter is in these little tiny, little tiny pieces, all right? Now we're gonna add some cheese, and I like to add a uh, sharp cheddar cheese. I think it gives a nice flavor. And so that's what we use. Oh my heavens, you guys. Now we're in trouble. We're in huge trouble. It didn't rip down far enough to open the package. And nobody's home. And I don't have a sharp knife. This is when I need help. Let's see if we can break into this with a fork. Oh, we might be able to do it. We did it. It's not so pretty, but it's open. So I got it open and we're gonna add, I got it, thank you. We're gonna add about three quarters of a cup. You can add upwards of a cup of cheese. 
And we're just gonna mix that in because I do like it even throughout. And then I'm gonna create a well in the middle. Now, you're gonna need about one cup of liquid. So one cup of milk. Today I'm gonna use buttermilk because, well, it's good. And why not use buttermilk, right? You don't have to use buttermilk. Use a whole milk, use a 2% milk. I even use 1% milk or a no fat milk if that's what I have. Or use a combination. You could use half and half. You could use like a half of a cup of buttermilk and you could use sour cream with it. There's so many different options. You could make your own buttermilk at home. But we're gonna add that in and we're gonna mix it up. Now you can use a spoon, you can use that fork, because these are just biscuits. But you do wanna make sure that you get all of that flour on the bottom. And trust me, I will hop back and I will look at these comments here in just a moment. I might need a little bit more. There we go. Now, in the air fryer, of course, these can be cooked in the oven or baked in the oven at 450 degrees for like 12 to 13 minutes. But the goal today is to not turn on the oven. I'm hot, you guys. My little Idaho body is not used to these temperatures. I like it cool. All right. I think we're all pretty well mixed in. We're going to get rid of this. Do I have, I do not have, I did not plan well, you guys. Okay. Let's, I'm going to get two big spoons and we're going to do our air fryer. So preheat your air fryer to 400 degrees. Now I of course like to use, um, liners for my air fryer. These liners have holes in them so that the air can breathe through it. Um, and you can also use a baking spray, like an avocado baking spray. You can put in it as well. I have already preheated my air fryer. So it is nice and toasty hot. We are gonna drop spoonfuls right in here. Now these will puff up a little bit, so make sure you give them a little bit of room. And here's the fun thing. This biscuit recipe I meant to cut in half because I just don't need this much today. Um, and so it just makes a nice, if you cut the recipe in half, it makes a nice size amount of biscuits. Try your hardest to make sure these biscuits are similar in size. Don't do some big ones and some teeny ones because they won't bake evenly. Okay, you're already noticing that I am not listening to my own advice, and I promise you, they're gonna be baked goofy. I'm trying to get a few in here. Think we can fit one more? I think we can. That one needs a little bit more. So does that one. There we go. All right. Now, we're gonna bake these 400 degrees and we're gonna bake them for about nine minutes, but I'm gonna put them in for eight because we like to um, test what they're gonna be. So we're gonna let that do its thing. We're gonna set this off to the side. And we're gonna answer questions and we're gonna hang out. 
I got so much going on here, you guys. My hands are a little bit messy today. So many of you. <laughs> Michelle says, be glad you're not in East Bay anymore. Oh, yes. Um, I've heard it's been hot in East Bay. Very, very hot. I left the East Bay when I was 18 years old. Love, love the San Francisco Bay Area where I grew up. Love the rolling hills of Berkeley area. Um, but I'm glad I'm not there. But I love to go back and visit. I love the culture. Lisa says, I swear I could make a meal out of these biscuits alone. Hands down, yes, you could. Hands down. Think about if you added in little um, ham cubes. You know how you can buy the little ham cubes at the store and you mix those into the biscuits? Um, those would be fun little sandwichy snacks. I think they'd be so good. We love to make a homemade marinara sauce with them and just have biscuits and marinara. It's really, you know, just a little appetizer, but it's just a fun snack that we'll enjoy. Sigrid, okay, best comment ever. Um, Sigrid said, I had no idea that cheddar biscuits were so easy to make. Yes, yes. And that's why I love going live. And even Sigrid, you watch me every single week and have forever and ever. And I love that when I go live, I can show these other recipes to let you see how simple it is to throw together. Keep in mind, our goulash is still cooking, right? So our goulash has come to pressure. It's got three minutes left. Um, and then it'll re we'll do the natural pressure release and we'll release the pressure, which means our goulash and our biscuits are going to come out at relatively the same time. Dinner is served. Simple, easy, and I didn't heat up my kitchen or my oven or any of those kind of things. Kind of fun. Um, oh, Lisa. <laughs> okay, Lisa says, if I was feeling lazy, could I just use the box mix they sell, they sell at the store and follow your baking instructions? Yes. In fact, listen, I almost bought the box mix to show you that. Because I don't want you guys to think that I always cook from scratch. I'm a busy mom, I work, I, I do this, right? And sometimes I don't have time for it or maybe I don't have the ingredient or maybe I just want the box mix, right? Buy the Red Lobster mix. They sell them at Costco and you get three in the box, super affordable. Um, follow these directions, mix it up. Mix it up as to what the package says. So mix up your box mix with the milk and whatever it's telling you to put into it, right? but then use your air fryer 400 degrees for about nine minutes. Um, and then we're gonna use, so I've already melted this up. It's like two, three tablespoons of butter with some Italian seasoning, with some garlic powder all mixed up and you melt it. And we're gonna brush that on the top. If you buy the Red Lobster pack, it'll have the little seasoning packet that you add your butter to. Super simple. I don't want this to um, solidify because I melted it before we went live. It's really that simple. Um, and dinner is served. Dinner will be served, it'll be fantastic. Hi Jerry, how are you? Hi Phyllis. Phyllis is watching over on YouTube, welcome, welcome. I'm trying to go back. Oh, Lisa says that stewed tomatoes are good to use in it too, that's correct. A stewed tomato is gonna to have a nice flavor that you can add that'll be wonderful to the goulash. Debbie says, I'm making goulash in the Instant Pot. It's so fast and easy. I love that you're making it along with me, Debbie. Debbie is from Centerville, just a few miles from the Ohio State line. <laughs> Deborah is telling me that her hair has a mind of its own. Yes, my hair has a mind of its own. Um, I'm using a product at the recommendation of somebody else and I'm trying to like embrace it and learn because curly hair has a mind of its own. Um, but it's certainly easy to do. We like that. 
Okay, the pressure cooker just beeped. So what does that tell us? If you're new to pressure cooking, we know that the pressure cooker has completed the cook cycle, which was a four minute cook cycle. Now we want to allow a four minute natural pressure release. So when the instant pot or pressure cooker is cooking, those, the cook cycle, it'll count down in numbers. So four, three, two, one, zero, and that's when it beeps. In the natural pressure release stage, it's gonna count up in numbers. Unfortunately, there is no beep to tell us when the time is done, we do have to watch it. So you'll just know when those numbers start going up after it beeps, pay attention so that you open it up. And if you forget, like so many of us do, it'll sit in there a while. Does it hurt it? Sometimes, in this case with pasta, it'll just keep cooking that pasta and it'll be overcooked, which of course, pasta isn't very good overcooked. All right? Now, I get asked this question a lot. How come sometimes a recipe with pasta is four minutes and sometimes it's five minutes and sometimes it's six minutes? What makes the difference? And I really do love when I get questions like this because of course today it's a four minute recipe. When a couple of weeks ago we were making probably Hawaiian Mac salad and it was a five or a six minute, right? So what makes the difference? Do you know? If you know, put it in the comments. Let's see if anybody knows it. Chris, yes. Chris is asking for the measurements of the biscuits. I will give them to you again in just one moment. So get your paper, get your pen, just hold that thought. Jerry is asking, can I make it with Bisquick? Yes, you can. If you use Bisquick, of course, it, Bisquick already has that baking soda and the baking powder already in it, and so you don't need to add that part. So those are two great questions. <laughs> Juanita says, yay, I have the box, I'm gonna make these. All right, I love it, I love it. Okay, so why are there the difference in the cooking time? The difference is because in this recipe, we've cooked up the hamburger, we have all of that extra broth, we have the tomato sauce and the tomatoes, and we have a lot of ingredients in the pot. The time it takes to pressure up, because it has more ingredients in the pot, is longer. And the cooking time starts when we start the process. So if I'm just cooking pasta and nothing else, it will come to pressure a lot quicker than it will with hamburger and tomato sauce and tomatoes and everything else. So when you have more ingredients, you have to kind of think, okay, I don't want that pasta overcooked. I only need four minutes because it's gonna take longer to pressure up, which is cooking time, and that's cooking that pasta. That's the reason. Got it? Okay, we have one more minute on our pressure cooker on the natural release before we open it up. And we're gonna move it away from our counters, from our overhead, and I'm gonna open that up. Our air fryer also just beeped at us. Oh, those got a little done, so I'm glad I only did eight minutes. Maybe start at seven minutes, those of you who are doing it at home. Now, if our Instant Pot starts to spit out at us because there's a lot of liquid going on in here, remember, you can close that pressure valve. Can you even see that? No, you can't. Why can't you see that? Oh, you can. I just have something on my screen. So we're gonna let this do its thing. We're gonna open this up. We're gonna go top down. These got a little crispy. And those of you I have not forgotten, I'm gonna do the measurements again. But I wanna take this butter mixture. Remember this has like two or three tablespoons of butter with some Italian seasonings, about a half of a teaspoon of garlic seasonings, and I wanna brush over the top. So I did these at 400 degrees for eight minutes. So do yours at home for seven minutes. And again, it does make a difference what size your biscuits are. 
it's always easier to add extra time than to overbake. But they smell wonderful. Look at how cute these are. All right, those of you at home, you have your papers ready. Two cups of flour. Two cups of flour is 240 grams of flour. One teaspoon of sugar. One tablespoon of baking powder. One quarter teaspoon of baking soda. One half teaspoon of garlic powder. One third of a cup of butter, cold butter, grated in like you saw. I used one cup of buttermilk, but you could use whole milk, 2% milk, half and half, or you could make your own buttermilk by doing like a cup of milk and a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and let it sit for like 20, 10 minutes. So you could do that. Um, and then mix it all together. Did that get it? <laughs> Sigrid says, I'm drooling over those biscuits. They really look pretty good. They're still hot. It's a little dark down in here, but here we go. Look at those. Look at how nice they are on the underside. So honestly, they're, they're only a little dark on those top nodular. Like, you know how biscuits are kind of knobby? They're only dark on those. It's really pretty, pretty good. Um, you guys, I did not plan today. I have to admit, I'm tired today. Do you guys ever have a day where you're just worn down? That's my day today. Oh, how much cheese? Kathy, I'm sorry. Um, I used about three quarters of a cup of sharp cheddar cheese, three quarters to a cup of sharp cheddar. Um, I do find that um, the sharp cheddar has a, a, a stronger flavor. Of course, you could use any combination of cheese. Some people like to use some Parmesan and some mozzarella or a Romano cheese and a mild cheddar. Have some fun with it. And let me tell you guys something. Try adding, instead of putting cheese in it, right? And instead of adding the garlic powder, do everything else and then throw in some cinnamon chips or chocolate chips and mix it up and bake it. Just try it. You won't regret it. It's fun. Kids love it. Um, they're not overly sweet, but then you get a little bit of the chocolate or a little bit of the cinnamon chip. You could put some cinnamon in it as well if you like. Um, it's just a quick, easy little thing. This recipe right here is a super easy, very forgiving recipe you can do with kids. I love to get kids, little, little kids in the kitchen, even Little Miss. When I go to visit Little Miss, they love these biscuits and Little Miss will help me and stir the ingredients together and she will help. It gets kids in the kitchen so they're not afraid to try when they're older. And when you have things like this that turn out that they'll eat and they love, it's magic. Truly, it's magic. All right, we're gonna move this off. We're gonna open this up. We got a lot going on over here. We're gonna stir this up. This is a lot of steam. Oh, you guys can't see. Oh, good. Oh, no, you can't. It fogs up my lens. So look at that. This is done. Now, you could top this with cheese if you like. All right, we're gonna put some on a plate here. I do like a little bit of cheese on mine, so I am going to do that. And remember, those of you at home, use your little cutout thing on your lid, your little notch, and it fits right in your handles. That way the condensation from the inside can drain down 
um, in the, your little reserve cup in the back. It gets it out of the way so you don't burn yourself, all the different things. Let's get some contrast here. Never fails. As soon as I can get some contrast under this, you guys can see it so much easier. There we go. What do you think? Is that beautiful? Add some fresh fruit, add some strawberries or some sliced apples or whatever you want with it, but you've got a meal. All right, now I know those of you at home wanna see the insides of the biscuits, and we haven't gotten that far yet. So, here's the biscuit. Look at that. There's a little bit of a cheese pull even because we've got enough cheese in there. But do you see how nice and flaky that is? It's cooked all the way through, so there are no like raw parts. I like the bottom. Mm, mm. Do a little dance. So good. Now, your goulash, your slumgolian, your hamburger mac, whatever you call it, it's hot. If you want, sprinkle a little cheese on it. Let the kids sprinkle a little cheese. Don't try to eat this too fast because you will burn your mouth. Yeah, I can see the steam coming up off of that. Did I get a big enough bite here? Here we go. There it is, it's focusing now. That's hot. Mm. So good, it's really hot though. Let it cool. It's fantastic. Kathy says, yum. Kathy says, my husband loves your goulash. He requests it often. Kathy, I love that. Kathy, will you leave me a comment over on the recipe and just put that? My husband loves the goulash. He asks for it often and give it a star rating. If you try my recipes, please go back and leave those comments. And more importantly, leave those star ratings. If you loved it and you use it, give it a five star. Let, leave comments for other people because it helps them so much. All right, you see how quickly the cheese melted because this is hot. The biscuits are perfectly done. We were able to cook, well, I did eight, but I could have fit nine biscuits into my air fryer if you have the basket style. If you're using the tray style, you might cook a little bit less. If I had only done half a batch, if I had taken that recipe and cut it in half, it would have been the whole batch, which is what I typically do. So I'll cook up this other batch here when we're all done. But that's dinner. And look, we got that done so fast. And my kitchen's not heated up. And it's an excellent, excellent meal. So I hope this has helped some of you. We're gonna do more recipes. Um, quick minute, I will not be here next Sunday. I will be out of town. I'll be driving back home. So I will not be live next Sunday, but I will be back the following Sunday, whatever that date is. All right, Juanita asked something. Where's Juanita? Sorry, I missed how long. Okay, 400 degrees, cook the biscuits. 400 degrees for seven minutes. These biscuits right here were cooked for eight minutes. And to me, the tops are a little bit done. And honestly, it really just depends on how big you do them. Like sometimes I do bigger ones and so I don't get this because I usually do them bigger. Um, but when I did these smaller ones, go to seven minutes, peek in on them. And if you have to cook one more minute, then cook one more minute. It's better than over cooking them and being disappointed is my game with it. But you can see just how cooked they are. They're cooked all the way through. So I think even at seven minutes, you're going to be just fine. I'm going to try these last ones at seven minutes, and then I'll try to shoot this recipe, get it up on my site so that it's there permanently. Kathy says, great demo. See you in two weeks. I'll be back in two weeks. Summer's a hard time. If you haven't given this video a thumbs up, please do. Like right now, there's 110 of you watching. If all 110 of you will give this video a thumbs up, it means a lot to me. 
just a quick thumbs up give it a heart if you have shared this whether it's on your timeline or into a group big hugs from me to you truly i know i say this and it sounds repetitive but it really really does make a difference i am a very small business and because of each of you and taking the time to like it give a heart and share it helps me it tells facebook that this is great content and shares with more people which is what i so appreciate and it's something simple you can do at home of course one more big shout out to amy from the instant pot 101 for beginners group fantastic group if you are hopping over from that group and you found me today i hope you'll follow me here at devour dinner i do these lives most every sunday well i do them every sunday that i'm in town summer's a little bit harder so i will not be live next sunday but i'll be back the following sunday and we have been broadcasting on both facebook and on youtube if you're watching this on the replay put your comments in i try to circle back around and answer those comments um, when i see them so please do that in the meantime you guys it's summertime i don't know where july has gone it's a little bit crazy but thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming and supporting me and being here and hanging out with me because it's fun and I hope you have fun too. And I hope that you learn a few things. Juanita says, everything looks yummy. Kathy says, yum. Teresa says, looks delicious. Oh, Sigrid is answering Teresa's comment. Teresa, you must have asked, where do I find the other ones, the other videos? I have been doing these Sunday lives now for four years most every Sunday, which means I have a huge library of videos. So if you go to my Facebook page, a lot of them are on YouTube as well. A lot of them I have uploaded there after the fact, but Facebook has all of them. And if you go into Devour Dinner's Facebook page, then there's like a little menu and one of them is videos. Click on it and it will open up the library of videos. They're all there. You can watch them. Even ones from years later, they're kind of embarrassing, <laughs> but they're still there. Um, you can see how much weight I've lost in the last year. You can watch that transformation. You can see my hair changing through the time that we won't talk about all the fun things. It's great. It's all documented. Um, but there's so many great recipes for instant pot. And then I have been more recently the last year or so sprinkling in air fryer recipes as well, because I love the air fryer and we use the air fryer a lot. We use it a lot. So, all right. What other questions do you have? Char says, just got on. We'll have to watch the replay. Char, welcome. It's good to have you watch the replay. Let me know if you have questions. <laughs> Juanita says, what time is dinner? Seriously? I should have cooked a half a batch today. We're empty nesters. I need to get my son to come back over and take some of this. I'm going to go surprise my cute neighbors um, with dinner. I hope they love it. Um, make these biscuits. Tag it. Take a picture and make sure to tag me. Chris, I answered your question, all the measurements. I hope you got them. I hope you're still here. Um... Oh, Dar says, any recommendations on what brand of air fryer to begin with? Dar, I love my Kasori. Love my Kasori air fryer. I have the 5.8 quart Sephora Kasori basket style. I have also used the Instant Pot. Yeah, it's the Instant Pot brand. Um, when I travel and I'm staying at a friend's house, that's what they have, and I use that a lot. Um, and that is very, very similar to the Kasori. Um, so I would, I would go with that. It's what I like. Um, the basket works great. Lots of great airflow and it's a good size. We do a lot with it. All right, everybody, this has been great. If you haven't given this video a thumbs up or a heart, please do so now you can watch it on the replay. It's there forever. And let me know if you have any more questions, but I'm going to dive into dinner because I'm ready to eat and I need more of these biscuits in my life. All right. Have a fantastic Sunday. Remember to be kind. Be kind to others, but most importantly, be kind to yourself. You're doing a great job. You really, really are. Life isn't always easy. And let me tell you, it's tough being a parent. It's tough working. It's tough. So give yourself a hug and give yourself a little grace and just be kind. Okay, everybody. Happy Sunday. Bye.